USA. It's Thursday. We've got a webinar tonight, 7 p.m. Uh, and this is really the last call uh, for this month. Uh, I am going to start doing live events. Uh, I'm probably going to start either in Houston, might start here in Austin. I uh, haven't quite decided yet. But um, anyways, I uh, would love some feedback on that. Uh, you can also call in. You can call in right now. I've got a uh, live call in if you want to call in. If you've got a real estate question, you want to you know, talk about what you should buy, what you shouldn't buy, you know, what you, you know, all kinds of, you know, anything you want to cover, I'm game to talk about it. Uh, you know, I've got uh, a lot of property I've bought over the many years, and uh, I can always run to, and, you know, if you want to look at apartment buildings, you want to look at whatever, whatever floats your boat. You know, chances are I've owned it, and, uh, <clears throat> and I can give you the benefit of my experiences with those things. Um, it's pretty interesting how things are adjusting, right? We're, we're kind of adjusting to the economy. Uh, the, you know, the, the inflation still seems to be going up. Uh, you know, I just left a building that was $2.2 million. Uh, that's what it sold for, closed for. In fact, the guy that bought it is actually renting another building from me. And he's renting a 1,000-square-foot building from me. And I think he's paying 2600 a month. And he just bought a building for $2.2 million that he's putting basically the same kind of business in. A uh, little bit more, you know, downtown, a little bit busier area. But... Either way, he's paying seven hundred dollars a foot, uh, at which you know. So if you apply that to the one percent rule, he would be paying, you know, he's he'd be paying about twenty one, I guess twenty one thousand dollars a month, you know, rent. But just 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 to the taxes, uh, and if he rented eighty five percent of it, he'd be looking at at almost uh, what did I figure? I think about twenty. 20,000, about 20 something thousand, 22,000 a month. That's a big nut to crack for a business. Um, anyways, uh, so look, webinar tonight, and uh, I'll be right back. But I hope you guys show up, and I hope you can uh, get into the webinar tonight, and we'll take some live calls. And whatever you guys want to talk about, we'll talk about. You want to learn how to make millions of dollars in real estate. I've made tens of millions over my lifetime, and I'm showing people how to do it. Get in my free webinar. I have it every Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. Go to the link below. Flip anything, usa.com slash webinar. Sign up for it. You can talk to me face-to-face -face if you want. Don't waste any time. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. You don't want to miss my channel. I've been doing it for years. All right. So, anyways, what's on your mind out there, anybody? Uh, you know, anybody paranoid? Anybody, uh, you know, uh, afraid to invest? Uh, you know, I, different parts of the country, you know, different things are going. I, I'm, I'm actually, in, you know, I'm in Austin, Texas, and uh, very, very healthy. A lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of high-paid engineers in this town, um, and uh, you know, and really. Uh, I have not seen the decline. I've seen a little decline. The market's a little bit slower. I, I just sold a house uh, yesterday, paper signed, uh, 402. Is that technically, so listen, technically it's, because uh, I want to be accurate, technically it was sold for 392, uh, but the, rate, the way they got to 402 is that the agent was also buying and waiving her, her, her side of the, her, her, buyer side of the uh, uh, of the commission, so three percent of four hundred thousand. There's another twelve thousand to me. Uh, so add that to the three ninety two. I come out with a net four hundred two uh, on the sale price. Uh, and uh, so, so uh, anyways, uh, for me, you know, look, I live and breathe LoopNet. Uh, I you know Crexy, uh, and of course I. Have the, some of the secret ways that I look for property that I only share with the people in the mentorship. Uh, by the way, uh, you know, again, tonight, uh, really, if, if, you, if you're at all serious, uh, you should definitely uh, check out the mentorship. Uh, go to flipanythingusa.com, and, and we'll get on to the subject. If anybody wants to, you know, if you want to go, I can, we can go watch a, Watch a video, a fake guru, or whatever you want to do. We can jump around like that. Um, if there's somebody out there uh, you want to look at, 
Let me know. We'll go, we'll go check over there. I thought it was interesting. I saw a video, a short, maybe I can find it, uh, a short on why Chris Crone, uh, what he hates about her, about uh, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, so Andrew wrote, uh, hey, I've been working hard, saving up and taking your advice, currently looking for a deal and being patient. Well, that's important. You know, there's nothing worse. You know, you got to be patient. I mean, it, it, the best thing to be is educated because then you can move quickly when you see a, see a bargain. And uh, if you don't do that, you know, the, you know, the, the like I, I just had a potential student uh, that I uh, wants to join the class, and I took a quick look at at, at her. So it's a gal, uh, her property, and the first thing I thought was, yeah, don't buy this. I looked a little deeper, and I said, yeah, it's a total mistake. I said, even if you sold it for you know forty thousand more than you just paid for it, you would break even. Um, so GLH here bought the paperback and audio book. Really liked the story about the cute girl uh, with a chihuahua. Yes, Sandy. Uh, I want to make uh, 8K a month after taxes and cash flow. Uh, is it bad to prefer cash flow over long-term appreciation? And listen, all I mean, it's all good, but that's actually a really good subject line you brought up there. Look, unless you're already rich, you, you can't afford to live on, you know, 10% interest, you know, you might think, yeah, I'm getting a 10 cap or gee, I'm getting a 20 cap. Listen, if it's, if that's on, you know, money that's less than, you know, a million dollars, uh, chances are you'd be better off, you know, turning whatever you whatever you own uh, into cash and buying something else with that. Now understand that if you've got a property that's giving you a 10 cap or you're giving you a 20 cap, you know, based on what you paid for it, I uh, then you probably you know that's like typical for the people in my class because they got a hell of a deal in other words we only buy under market we only buy under market uh, in my class and uh, and if you you know if you get into the mentorship and you'd be lucky if you did uh, because it, it is such a you know there's just there's just nothing like it uh, you know you I see people come out of other communities and, and they realize that their communities were laughable you know inexperienced. Uh, you know, just, uh, a, you know, a bit of a joke. But uh, so look, uh, I've got a book, uh, Wake Up and Smell the Real Estate. You can see it behind me. I urge you to buy that as quick as you can. Uh, and just like uh, GLH did and uh, uh, Andrew here that's in the class here or in the <laughs> watching right now. And look, somebody call up, you know, uh, you know, somebody that's been in, been in real estate for 40 years or 30 years. You know, I'd love for somebody to call in with some real experience. Uh, you know, we can talk, talk about it. Um, or, you know, or, or, you know, if you're new to, it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm, you know, I'm at your disposal though right now, but be sure to uh, get in the webinar tonight. Flip anything, usa.com slash webinar. Uh, you'll, I guarantee you, you'll learn a lot from me. I share a lot in those and you know, the, the smarter you are, the cleverer you are. And believe me, I solicit, I look for clever. I look for smart. You know, a lot of, a lot of these, uh, classes, you know, I mean, the, the people, the, the, the pitch that I see made by the guys that you guys know who I think are fake, you know, they really talk to people like they're stupid. And if people listen to somebody that talks to them like they're stupid, they're stupid. They are stupid. And so, but it's like a pre-qualifier for that person. In other words, that's who they're looking for. They're looking for people that are easily, you know, whatever, uh, you know, just distracted and, you know, gullible. And uh, because, believe me, pe people that are easily distracted and gullible are really not business people. You know, business people aren't so easily distracted. You know, that's why they, they're successful. They got their, you know, they got, and that's why I love, that's why I love my tenancy. You know, the tenants I have are, you know, buildings, you know, pe people that build, people that make something, manufacturers. I got scientists, you know, but I also have, you know, hair and nails and, you know, uh, you know, people that, you know, do a lot of different trades, uh, rent from me. And, the reason I like those kinds of people is they are business people. They are smart. They will survive. You know, they will do anything not to, you know, have a W, uh, you know, to take a check, you know, have a W-2 income. You know, they want a 1099 income. They want to get, they want to have an income of, of large chunks of money and big rents. And, uh, you know, you can do, you can do so well so quickly. And, uh, you know, so anybody, somebody call in here, if you would, please. And, uh, you know, maybe we can have a conversation that'll lead somewhere else. 
uh, you know, we get some really good stuff here when somebody, when people do call in. So I uh, hope somebody does. Anyways, uh, for now, let's, let's just jump around. Uh, what are you guys interested in right now? Commercial property, you know, houses are always great. I, I saw an interesting comment I, I heard out of Ben Jr. I was watching a little piece of a, a Ben Mala video, and he had referred to, you know, par- putting money in uh, into a commercial building, like a, a retail center, which I actually am quite fond of, as a way to park money. Uh, like, 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 in other words, to, me, to them, that's like buying gold, just parking it uh, and not having as big a return where buying the multifamily uh, or, you know, apartments and, or maybe hotels, you know, that's a business. That's where they're saying, that's where the money is. And, and I get that in as much as if you want to uh, have a business, right? And, and I know Ben, I think he's got a daughter that manages and then obviously the boys are managing properties. But uh, I just thought that was pretty interesting. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Happy for, feel free to call in, Chris, if you want. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't want to own the business. My business, I, I'm in the business of just providing four walls. Four walls for anybody that wants to be employed, uh, you know, self-employed. Uh, you know, and I, I do have residential rentals too, of course. Uh, they're not my favorite, but I do love houses because the, the the spread on, on making money on a house is, uh, is usually very, very good, you know. Uh, and uh, if anybody wants to call in, they can call in that number up there. Uh, GLH wrote, what do you do when a commercial is vacant with no tenants? You know, I, you know I, the best thing I can show you, I'm going to give you an example. and It's, off, it's with one of my students, uh, which is, you know, probably the uh, one of the most credible ways I can I can show you um, so look let's go in here this is great stuff by the way uh, yeah I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking of Ken so I want you to watch this everyone listening out there I highly recommend Tom's course, so the look Ken book. Ken you know look he's you know roughly my age and, you know, he's been around a while. You know, he's made some decent investments. Um, he wanted to learn more, and, uh, and he got into the mentorship. And he, this is when, at this time, he's explaining how, you know, the mentorship is what helped him make, you know, $600,000 in his first deal. And it was inside of six months. In fact, I'll play this just for a little bit, but then I'm going to get to the assets that is exactly what you asked about, about what do you do with vacant commercial assets. So, uh, I'll, uh, you know, listen, uh, son, would you do me a favor? Put the, put the phone number in the chat. Uh, the phone number will be in the chat. I'm going to take it off the screen here for a little bit. But be sure to get into the webinar tonight. If you have time, if you're serious about making money, that's where you should be. Um, so, uh, yeah, GLH, it's okay. It's a good question either way. So, look, let's play this and, and then... Uh, Let's see what I can Everyone show. listening out there, I highly Let me know that you hear it well. course, the mentorship program. I myself have made over $600,000 in a period of just a couple of months. Without the mentorship program, I would have never been able to do this transaction. So get into the mentorship program. It'll be the best investment in your life. All right, let's get past the little uh, the mentorship. Well, just all of your all of your YouTube videos. I mean, you just dedicate a lot of your time in every video that you do. You talk about so many different avenues in, in investing that no one that no one does. And then you you analyze different people who are out there and you analyze them in a fair way. I'm sure you wouldn't even mind if they called in and and, and basically had a one on one with you, even in a video, because you're that confident, you know, you can smell something that's just not right. Or if it is good you'll say that this person's got some good tips. Yeah, I appreciate what Ken said is, and that is the truth. I, I you know, listen, I'd love to be on stage with Pace, Morby, Chris Crone, Grant Cardone, any of these guys. I don't think Chris Crone or Grant Cardone are particularly skilled uh, real estate investors, and, and uh, same for Pace Morby. You know, listen, I've, I've been buying real estate longer than Pace Morby's alive, and and when I hear somebody makes such stupid statements and, and really Pace takes the cake on that stuff, you know, uh, bring me your local, bring me your no... Your no equity uh, properties. I'm interested. You know that is music to the ears of the dumb that think. Uh, and maybe he's brilliant because what he's doing is he's 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 re- re-emphasizing to people that 
uh, look, you can make money on zero interest, zero equity deals, which is absolutely false. And But it's like music to somebody that wants to come in and maybe part with $8,000 uh, and buy something really, or, you know, it just gives them hope. You know, listen, the, the effect I've, you know, the more and more I've seen about it, I, I doubt that Pace Morby students, I doubt they've done, I doubt that 1% of their deals, 1%, and I don't think there's been many deals at all, I doubt that 1% has been a sub two deal anyways. And when I've heard him talk about sub two, I mean, they're subpar, they're horrible deals. So, uh, but I'll let Ken keep talking here and then I'm gonna read uh, John Barriston's comment at the same time, we'll get back to that. And you, and you, and you let people know Absolutely. that there's other people out there that, that are giving good tips as well. So after you got the book, did you make any deals with the book prior to getting into the mentorship? No, but it did help me on one of the deals that I did get after a value add building as, as far as on, on the, on the videos and the zoom classes definitely helped me as, as far as uh, giving me more confident to go in there to do some renegotiating of the leases, to ask certain questions. Yeah, and so here's one of the things I bring to the table as a mentor is, look, I've been doing it for many decades now, but but also there's just so many different things in, in negotiating, negotiating leases, negotiating buying, uh, negotiating the sale. You know, it's an art form. And uh, if, you, if, if you haven't done a ton of it, you're never going to be great at it, and you can't be. It takes experience. And, and I'm saying it takes decades to, to get as good as I am, uh, but it doesn't take that long to, to learn it from somebody like me, okay? And I've got some, like Chris, Chris here is a wonderful example of somebody that's just kicking ass, just like Rich and, and, and like, you know, Ken you see here and others. And so, but, so John just wrote here, in regard to flipping houses, should you upgrade countertops to quartz uh, in the kitchen or keep them if they're in good shape? Uh, John, it, it depends on what you've got. You know, the, the it, you can get away with it, right? Like I just got a quote for eight grand for cabinets for a little tiny kitchen, you know, and then it's going to need another $4,000 worth of quartz countertops like you just described, you know, and then I, I, I it, it, you know, and then don't, and plus, you know, add another eight grand for texture and paint. It, it begins to if a property looks like it was updated this is really an interesting thing by the way i've got a beautiful home i just sold my daughter inside it looks great now it's dated but it looks great in other words it's got perfect for mica countertops the cabinets are painted but they're perfect they look beautiful and it was a very well cared for home and i rented it to uh, tenants for four years before i sold it to my daughter and they took care of the place right? Um, and then, you know, but, you know, paint and paint grade cabinets are really pretty much accepted right now. They're not, it's not, you know, horrible to have paint grade cabinets. You know, the dead giveaway when you have old cabinets versus new, I mean, you can really paint an old set of cabinets and they can look fantastic. But the giveaway that they're, you know, old is when you go to roll open a drawer, you know, and it, it doesn't have that smooth, cool, you know, hardware that when you go to close it, it you know, in the last, you know, fourth, 25% of the, the, draw, the door, drawer being open still, it, it kind of grabs it and it kind of pulls it in and closes itself. You know, and those are big impressions. When people come into a house, especially the kitchen, primarily for the women or the men, depending on who cooks, uh, and both do cook these days, uh, you, know, you know, that can be an instant turnoff. You know, you, you pull a drawer, a, a drawer out and then it sags two inches when you pull it out 80% of the way. That's instant turnoff. So if you got something like that, you know, it, you know, you get on Amazon and, you know, buy a little bit of hardware and, you know, make, improve the hardware, improve the hardware. If you're going to keep the cabinets, because, you know, it's, you know, it's just like if you walked and you stepped in dog crap, you'd be like, ah, you know what I mean? It's a turnoff, right? It's like, that's how it feels. You open a drawer that, you know, pops off the, the, the hardware, you know, or, or just sags, you know, it's not a good impression. Also, you want to look in and see a nice clean drawer, by the way. Uh, so uh, another question, Anderson Lynn, uh, what would you recommend charging for a lease on 12,000 square foot building, commercial property, right on the freeway? Um, what else did you write here? 
One dollar a square foot. Listen, Anderson, I need more information. It just depends on where you're at. I mean, the the the, the bottom line is, and, and we can talk about this, is, you know, listen, I charge as much as I possibly can on a lease and still make the people feel really good about the deal. In other words, I come off maybe the top of the market. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, a, I want them to survive. I want them to be comfortable. And, and, and this gets easier to do. The more the more property you have and the more money you're worth and the more value you have personally, you can afford to give a little bit better deal to your clients. And your tenants are your clients, right? And and so it's just good business to, you know, give people a good deal. You know, and there's a liquor store that sold not too long ago away from me. And what these guys... It was the Vietnamese folks that owned it. And you go in there and you get a bottle. They, and if you got two bottles, they go, oh, you know, let me take this. And they would take some money off. Or they'd say, oh, here, try this. And they'd throw in another bottle. And, you know, and this, somebody bought their company. And I hadn't been in there in, you know, six months. But I went and picked up a couple of bottles. And, the, you, know, and he, you know, I bought you know, two or three whiskey bottles. And he says, oh, here, let me give you some. And he, what he did is he was following suit to the people that built the business before him. They're long gone. Now this guy's, you know, in charge and he, but he's picked up right where they left off and it's a good, it's good. It's good to, to do that. Now, so Anderson, uh, you know, I would give, just tell you what, this is a fairly decent rule. It's called the 1% rule. So if you've got a property, you know, 12,000 square feet, uh, and let's just say, you know, you, you, you bought it for, you know, 1.2 million dollars, right? So you paid, you paid a hundred bucks a foot. If you pay a hundred bucks a foot, you can probably get away with paying, uh, you know, get for one percent. In other words, you can you can rent it for a dollar a foot, uh, meaning a dollar a foot per month. Okay, twelve dollars a foot. So you paid a dollar a foot for the bill, or a hundred dollars a foot for the building. Uh, it, it will pencil for you to to rent it at twelve dollars uh, a year, or one dollar a month per foot. Right. So you get, you know, so th that's all. Uh, that that's probably a, a, a rule. If you, if a, pro a property doesn't pencil at renting it, if you can't rent it for one percent of what you're uh, what you're paying for it per foot, uh, then you're probably making a mistake. In other words, if, if it doesn't pencil, but you, number one, you know you're looking around, and you know, and I'll come back to Ken here in a second. But uh, let me just. Put, let me just show you something real quick. I'm going to jump over to LoopNet because where where Andrew Lynn Anderson Lynn, where are you? Just give me an idea. It doesn't even really matter, but we'll just do whatever. Los Angeles. Okay, here's Los Angeles, uh, and you know, let's just say you're talking the kind of property you're talking about sounds like warehouse at best. Uh, but so we'll go for lease here, uh, and we'll go in here and we'll take a look. And, you know, you can, over here, you can kindly, quickly ascertain what, you know, what, what rents are, right? What the rents are in this area if you're looking to, uh, like, here's one here. Built in 1950, uh, 660 to 9,200 square feet. They have nine spaces available. You know, they're probably going to have a fire sale to fill that up in the beginning. But here's another one. Now, look at this one here on the right here. You've got 1788 to $49 a square foot. That's a big spread, right? I mean, that's almost three times. So they have some stuff that is three times more expensive than other stuff that's in the same building. Uh, but again, so in other words, if, if I was going to buy something uh, or if I was going to rent something or if I was going to buy something and then rent it, I would be very interested in looking at the properties that are in and around my area so I can figure out what they're renting for. Like this makes more, you know, this is a little closer, you know, 48 to $52 a foot. Uh, and just so you know, that's four bucks a foot per month, right abouts, right? Four bucks a foot per month. When they say 48, 60, they're talking about per year, right? A lot of times you'll see, this is kind of interesting. I, I'm familiar with Santa Monica. It's been a while since I've been there. Hmm. Uh, but, uh, uh, so I, d does that answer your question? Oh, Northern California. Yeah, actually, I'd seen actually quite a deal. It, do it doesn't matter where it is. It, you know, it just, you know, look, how on earth, 
uh, a guy can pay $700 a foot. I, and like I say, I just left a building a little while ago that sold for $2.2 million. And it was only 30, what was that, 3,100 square foot, son? I think it said 3,100. Yeah, about 3,100. So, so basically he sold, you know, he paid $700 a square foot. So, but, but anyway, so what, what I was going to say is, you know, you go in here, you can see what's for lease in your area. It could be anywhere USA. Uh, and then you can kind of go back and you kind of look for what sales and, and, and those numbers should jive. You should be able to, you know, you should be able to like, this is 9.9 million dollars, uh, right? This one here. And, you know, this looks pretty clean and neat. Let's see what's on the street. Yeah. I don't know where this ad is at exactly, but but you take a look at something like this. If you're going to be buying it and it's vacant, you know, uh, they call it creative office space. Looks like semi, what I would call a flex space. You could do some industrial in there as well. Uh, you know, so a good looking property. This really looks nice. Okay, but if you're going to pay, uh, how many square feet total in here? I'm not seeing the square footage. Oh, wow. So it's 9,000 square feet. So look at this is in LA. It is $1,100 a square foot, right? So that means that's $1,100 in square foot a year. No, is that right? Yeah, so that's damn near $100 a foot. And you would, see, but that kind of follows, remember the 1% rule I was just talking about, right? What's 1% of, of you know, 9,900,000, uh, 9, right? Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's basically uh, 100,000. So, uh, and, and there you go. Uh, I know $100,000. Um, uh, was it, you know, be, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. Uh, no, it'd be $1,000 uh for for per foot right that would be the one percent rule it's kind of right there they're actually saying they're actually getting better than the one percent rule if this is correct you know otherwise this would be you know nine thousand uh i'm sorry it'd be nine hundred and ninety dollars a square foot nine hundred and ninety dollars a square foot would be the one percent rule based on a nine point nine million uh dollar purchase price and so this could jive now these are these are numbers that i can't really relate to i don't have anything that I, that I would buy, and I don't have anything right now that I believe that I could sell for that much. But you know what? This is the beautiful part about real estate, by the way, is, is you know, you, you get assets, even if you take a break and you quit or you just want to relax, you know, uh, you're still making money, just sitting still. I was telling my son on the way back from, I just picked up a check for, 77,000 another check for 60,000 uh you know uh, for what was those for that was actually yeah, I sold an easement for 60 grand actually and I was telling him you know that just even sitting still you know your portfolio is is growing in value you know it just it's going up tremendously you know this inflation is pushing everything up you guys may notice in your area they'll start to lobby for uh, bike lanes and they're trying to take four lane streets and reduce them to two lanes and then at the same time they're densifying the property so you can build more units which is really stupid right if you're if you're if you're gonna you know in you know intensify the density in an area you need more roads right you need better transportation but they're doing the opposite they're intensifying that and then they're taking away the roadways in favor of stupid bicycle lanes and i say stupid bicycle lanes because you don't increase the the density of a neighborhood and get rid of vehicle lanes you they actually need to get rid of the bicycle lanes and make more get you know get rid of half the sidewalk and uh, add another lane so people can get home at a decent time or get you know get across lunch to go have lunch you know it's getting to, to be so bad on in some of these areas where they've reduced the, the the lane size people can't go grab lunch in an hour they don't even they can't even do it in an hour it takes them 15 minutes to get where they're going to go then they got a half hour to eat and then get back in 15 minutes you know it's terrible so just be aware you know there's it's, it's sinister forces out there and and it's you know it's for me it's you know i'm going to make tons of money uh, you know with it with the, with what they're doing but the quality of life is going to go down 
for the people in those neighborhoods because what, what they're doing is they're kind of forcing everybody to get on public transportation because they're just not going to have the vehicles. You're not going to be able to turn left in an, in an area that has single lane each way. It's going to be too much traffic. Nobody's going to let you in. It, it's a nightmare. And some of you already know what it's like down like in Venice, California. You know, you got to be a very aggressive driver down there. And that's some of the areas that they're trying to mess with. Uh, John Barristan wrote, but the house does not, does need work, but that's why I was asking. Not sure how I should go. Uh, regardless, if I get, I'll try to shoot a video. Uh, yeah, sure, John. Uh, anyways, uh, let, let, let's go back here to, uh, to Ken. Uh, that's where I was. Where's that Ken video? Uh, yep, I don't have it. Oh, that's why. So, but back to Ken and on that, that retail question, this is important. Um, so I want you to look at this because the question is, what do you do when, and this is beautiful. So look at this is like, what do you do when a property is vacant? Well, obviously you fill it. Uh, and, but this is a property, this first one Ken bought in the, in the class, uh, and you can see it's boarded up. It was 80% vacant. There was just a little uh, massage parlor here and he got this property and, uh, you know, and it was, it was what he learned in the class is how he got it, but he got a fantastic deal too. And of course the paranoia is, oh, can I fill it? I said, oh yeah, hundred percent. You'll fill this thing so quick. It's not even funny. And, and when you come, I want you to see this because when you pull back, wait until you see what this is, you know, what, what this is near and it's a corner. And we got owner financing. And we also negotiated owner finance yeah. discount so that he got a discount. If he paid off the note that he negotiated, if he paid it off early, but let's go back up in the sky here because look at this, look at this. This is a property that when fully rented is worth about a million two, maybe a million three. Ken got this property for 600,000, Ken? 585. 585, 585. But with some additional uh, maneuvering, he's going to end up walking away, getting this for uh, 525, right, Ken? Yeah, that's correct. So he's going to, in the end, he's going to have a net 600,000 profit. profit. Am I correct? That is correct. And so now today, this property line. is fully occupied. He has tenants paying for every square foot of this building and based on the income approach this building's worth a million three you got roughly about seven seventy grand a year coming in on this that, that is correct yeah i mean that's an awesome deal ken it just and but look at this folks this is one of the best things he, he's got this corner which is nice already beautiful what is a cross from? take a look at this look what it's next to he's got an enormous shopping center right next to him and look at this this thing is beautiful <laughs> there must be there must be 100,000 square feet here at least yeah and this has just about every oh, shop geez. you could possibly want in a neighborhood and look at he's got a Ross he's got all these other different things but but he's at one of the entrances this is one of the entrances and exits of this massive uh commercial center and so everybody that walk, comes out here they walk out or they drive out and they're looking straight at Ken's place. Anybody that lives in this neighborhood is going to immediately know what business is in here. And that's a sales point for him to make to the tenants that rent from him. He can say, look, everybody's going to know you're here. You're not even going to have to spend as much money on advertising because everybody's going to know you're here when they pull out of this shopping center and they see your pace, see your place here. This was an absolute home run he hit. And we've got several people in the class now, right, Ken? That are, we have some students that have done a little. So anyways, that... Uh, you know, is is it's becoming more typical in the class all the time, uh, and uh, you know we've got many students that didn't know really hardly anything about real estate, uh, or they knew about residential, and now they you know they're now they're really into the retail and they see the benefit of that. Uh, others that just were you know very very green in the beginning, uh, and and you know like this gentleman here, you know Ron, he got nine kids and got like five million dollars worth of real estate now and. You know, very little debt. And when I say very little, I mean like, you know, like about a million, million and a half debt, $5 million in real estate. Uh, you know, Chris, he was popped in here earlier. He's, he's you know, on the same bandwagon. Uh, Liam right now is building a three-story building. 
uh, you know, or basically adding on to a property uh, that uh, he's going to make a killing on. It's beautiful what he's got there. Uh, and, and same with Steve here. Steve, you know, again, another great guy. Uh, really, really, uh, you know, the, the class is, is, yeah, let's is sign this million dollar deal. I've never very you know, cool. very done cool this in my life. Success. I was like freaking out, you know, and yeah, after taking, uh, reading Tom's book and, and being involved in his mentorship, um, I've been able to make, um, a couple hundred thousand dollars on a house, another couple hundred thousand dollars on another house. And, uh, what I estimate is up in excess of, of a million dollars in equity on a commercial building that I bought. So, um, it's very real and it, uh, it's, it's very tangible. So, yeah. So anyways, I urge you to listen, uh, the, the class is going to be more expensive here very soon. Uh, so get in the mentorship, you know, I've made some pretty good deals to people that, you know, were a little bit tight or a little bit wary. Uh, you know, all that is out the door at the end of this month. You will not get, some of the stuff that I've quoted to people and I like helping people and, and, you know, I can give the course away. And of course I, I am, you know, I try to be more generous to those that maybe can't afford it quite as well. And of course those that are more established, I'm telling you, listen, if you got a hundred grand or half a million dollars uh, in the bank and, and a lot of people do out there, folks, a lot of people do, uh, and they're, but they don't own any real estate or they haven't parlayed it well enough or they've done okay, but they don't realize how much better they can do. You know, you, you really got to have somebody, uh, in your corner that, that that can show you that can show you show the results of the, you know the mentorship you know the, like I say my students are the best advertisement for me you know they're the best uh, so anyways uh, I guess uh, that's where I'm going to leave it for now uh, but let's see what what else uh, John wrote something else here uh, not sure how I should. Oh, on the upgrades, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, listen, uh, you can throw too much money in a house. It's very easy to do. But if it's already neat and clean, uh, let, you know, we call it blue sky. Let somebody else imagine fixing it up and making it better and spending their money. They're probably misjudging it. Uh, anyhow, it'll probably cost more than, than they think because that's kind of usually, the, you know, how it goes. Uh, but, uh, hey, anyhow, uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out. I may even go live again before I start the webinar in an hour and a half, but I uh, hope I, uh, I see you all in there soon. Bye. And listen, time is on a mission to eliminate all the snake oil and the fake gurus that fake y'all. He'll show you how to build an empire, starting with nothing but a desire. All you really need is a good mentor, not a used car, bullshit. With time, you'll learn to crush it. Investing like Warren Buffett. With real estate, you cannot procrastinate. Everyone who hesitates is left at the starting gate. Hey, yo, so don't delay and join today. The mentorship and flip anything, you will Go. Go. You want to learn how to make millions of dollars in real estate. I've made tens of millions over my lifetime, and I'm showing people how to do it. Get in my free webinar. I have it every Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. Go to the link below. Flip anything, USA.com slash webinar. Sign up for it. You can talk to me face to face if you want. Don't waste any time. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. You don't want to miss my channel. I've been doing it for years.